Hey guys, today we have a really cool airplane by Plane Print. I'm going to show you guys how to assemble it. Stick it inside of the workbench and we'll put this together. So the first thing they need to do to start building your Icon A5 is print it out. Uh, if you guys are having problems with thin wall printing, I'll throw a link up in the top corner here for my thin wall printing. Uh, but just for this video, I'm just going to talk a few specifics on printing the Icon A5. So it's a little bit challenging to print the Icon A5 uh, because of fuselage 2, 3, and 4. Uh, they're difficult to print because they have an open piece here, so the extruder has to change direction, so it's a little bit hard to get a good quality print on those pieces. Uh, for fuselage 2 though, Plain Print put a tune part in and they have uh, fuselage 2 closed, and I printed that one and that one came out with a really good quality print, and then you just cut out the part, I'll show that in the video here in a second. Uh, but for fuselage 3 and 4, uh, it's a little bit challenging because you can't change the Z-seam location. Uh, so you just kind of have to keep messing with the, the settings and get the settings tiled in just right. So let's start building this plane. This airplane took 74 hours and 20 minutes to print. Once you have all the pieces printed out, we're going to start assembling it. So the first part is you just want to make sure you get all the pieces cleaned up. So like part like this has the brim still on it. So we're just going to cut that piece off and then use a little bit of sandpaper and clean up all the edges and make sure all the parts fit together nicely. The next part we're going to do is cut these one millimeter carbon rods. You can use one millimeter steel rods also for this step. These are just used for alignment for all the parts of the fuselage so that way all the pieces fit together and all the seams line up. And then we'll just start assembling the fuselage. This is the nose piece that I referred to that I'm going to cut the excess out. I'll just use a hot knife to cut this out and then I'll use a regular knife to cut it down to the line that I need and then I'll just use a little bit of sandpaper and clean it up. Next we're going to insert the fuselage spar so we're just going to insert that into the rear portion add a little bit of CA glue and let that drain down into the slots on the spar and that'll secure it in place in the tail and then we'll just glue that into this fuselage. We're going to use five millimeter square magnets to secure the canopy in place and they fit just perfectly into these slots in the fuselage and into the canopy. So we'll just add a little CA glue and insert those magnets. Okay, so if you guys are planning on testing this thing out on water and uh, taking it off on water, you'll make sure it's water sealed. So before I add any electronics or any wing on it or anything, I'm going to check and make sure that this part of the fuselage is all sealed off. So I already uh, looked underneath and sealed up any cracks or any spots that look like there would be a little bit of a leak, which is a little dab of CA glue. One part that I think is going to have some problem is this step here. So I added a whole bunch of CA glue right along this step here and let it dry and I think that'll seal that off and we're going to try to see if it's watertight. I threw this on the scale, it's 150 grams for this part of the fuselage. The total flying weight is 740 grams, so I have batteries in the Ziploc right here and I'm going to put that in the fuselage if it looks like it's holding water and that'll bring it right to its ready to fly weight to see if it'll hold water.
Okay, so it looks like a little bit of CA glue actually sealed this thing off. So we're actually, it looks like it's all sealed up. We're not having any leaks in here. That's pretty awesome. So uh, we're ready to continue to finish this plane up and get it ready for flight. For the TPU hinges, you want to make sure that you just had a small amount of CA glue. So that way all the control surfaces can move nice and easily. For the elevator and rudder servo, there are these slots cut out in the horizontal stabilizer. We just need to cut those out with an X-Acto blade and then we're ready to glue these parts together. When you attach the elevator to the horizontal stabilizer, make sure that there's a little bit of a gap between the two surfaces so that way they can move nice and easily. The next thing I'm gonna do is set up my controller so that way I can bind my receiver to my transmitter and center all my servos. I'll be using four HS40 servos for this build. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug them into the receiver, plug them into a battery pack, make sure that all the servos are centered. And then I'm gonna remove these control horns and then we're gonna go ahead and try to insert them into the horizontal stabilizer. As you can see there, they don't fit with the mounting brackets on the servos. So we're just gonna go ahead and trim those off. And I'll use a little Dremel tool to smooth out the surface there. And then they'll fit down into the horizontal stabilizer. With the servo centered, then we can go ahead and add the control horns back onto the servos and make sure that the servos are oriented correctly with the control horns. And then we'll just go ahead and add some double-sided adhesive to the servo and we'll stick that to the servo mounts. With the elevator and the rudder servo installed, we're ready to hook up the elevator servo. I'm gonna go ahead and do it here on the build table because it's just a lot easier to work on here than it is on the airplane. I'm just gonna go ahead and do Z bends on both ends of the controls. Uh, you can add adjustment collars if you'd like to, uh, but it's just not needed when the servos are hooked up to different channels in the receiver and you've got quite a bit of trim anyways within the servo. Uh, and with the glue on control horns on the control surfaces, it's just really easy to do a Z-bend on both ends and then glue that in place. We need to add a servo extension to the servo to connect to the receiver. I'm gonna use a 600 millimeter extension here. And uh, Plane Pro recommends you just solder them because these connectors don't actually fit down into the fuselage all the way. So uh, I'm just gonna use a long extension and then tape them together and then uh, just not insert those connections all the way down in the fuselage. If you do solder them, you'll be able to pull the wire a little bit tighter and not have as much bunched up right there at the tail. I'm going to do the same thing with the rudder servo that I did with the elevator servo. I'm just going to have the Z-bend on both ends. And then uh, just glue that control horn in place and then we'll test out these control surfaces. Alright, now we're ready to start working on the wing. So we're going to glue these wing spar pieces together and just make sure that all the up arrows are facing up and then uh, just glue all them together. To glue the spar onto this portion of the fuselage, I just measured it, marked the center, and then glued it in place. I'm using Zap-A-Gap 
medium CA glue to assemble all these parts. And you can see that spray I just used there. That was a uh, accelerator, like CA accelerator. And it just glue, it makes the glue dry instantly as soon as you spray that. Uh, I don't use it a lot on this build because this is a white airplane. And if you spray that Zappy Gap accelerator, it will kind of turn the glue yellow. So I just try to use it like on parts that you're not going to see or that I want to dry really quickly. Uh, so like here, I'm going to add it to the wing and add it to the spar there. And then uh, I'm just going to glue that in place and then hold it for a few seconds and then just leave it. I'm not going to spray any accelerator on that because if I do, it'll turn that top part of the wing a little bit yellow right on the seam. So just to hide the seam a little better, it's just better not to use that. Make sure that before you glue all these pieces on that you test fit them, you know, make sure that they slide easily on the spar. And then if you need to work the spar a little bit with a little knife and sand it a little bit, uh, make sure to do that first. And I did that to all these pieces before I glued them all together. And then uh, we're ready to add the wing tips. The wing tips are a little tricky because there's not really any alignment tool. You just kind of have to put a little glue on that and then just line it up. Okay, now we're going to add some TPU hinges to the ailerons and then we'll insert them into the wing. When I put all these TPU hinges on, I add a little bit of CA glue and then insert the hinge into the control surfaces and then insert it all into the wing there. And make sure there's a little bit of a gap there between the control surface and the wing. Now ready to add the aileron servos. So again, we're gonna cut the mounting brackets off of the servo and then we'll add the double adhesive and adhere them to the servo mounts. And then we'll add an extension to the servo and then we'll just slide those extensions right into the slot in the wing and secure the servos in place. We're gonna make sure that the servos are centered, so we'll just plug them back in the receiver and then center the servos. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of tape to the wing there to center the aileron. And then we'll make a Z-bend on two ends of this uh, one millimeter wire. And then we'll add these control horns to the aileron and let that dry. And then we can take the tape off. a few more things to do and we're finishing up this plane so we just got to add the motor in the ESC so if you uh, see the motor there the shaft is uh, facing the wrong direction so we need to reposition it so we're just going to remove this allen key out of the motor we'll set this onto a socket and then uh, just tap the shaft down so that way it's facing the other direction there's a little keeper on there we'll take that off and then we'll insert the allen key back into the motor There's a few different motor mounts that plain print allows for you in the files so you just need to hold up the prop and the motor and make sure that you get the nice spacing there between the prop and the cowling so for me this flat one works the best so we're just going to secure these two motor mounts together with some screws and attach the motor and then we need to make sure that the esc is hooked up correctly that the motor spins the right direction with the prop so i'm just going to hook that up to a battery and then put the prop on there and just make sure that it spins the right way. And then I just need to flip the prop around and change the direction of the motor by just changing the hookup of the ESC. And once I have that hooked up correctly, we're gonna insert the motor into the fuselage and then we'll just secure that in place with a few screws. We're gonna secure the battery in place with a piece of Velcro and that just needs to go all the way forward in the fuselage to get the CG set right. So we'll set that in place and then we'll, there's CG markings on the bottom of the wing. We'll just check and verify that that's set right. I'm going to make a small receiver holder so that way the receiver's not sitting right in the bottom of the fuselage. So if I taxi it on water or try to take it up on water, if there's a little bit of water in the bottom of the fuselage, it'll keep the receiver from sitting down in the bottom of the fuselage. So I'm just gonna use a piece of Velcro to attach the receiver and then glue that in place. And then we'll just do a final check and make sure everything's working correctly.
and we'll finish this plane up with a nice set of decals. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys need any of the parts that I used in this video, I have all of them down in the description, linked in the description. I also have my surface layer three settings in the description also. So if you guys are having problems with 3D printing, uh, you can use my settings and see if you can get a little closer. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to check out my YouTube channel for any other airplane builds. I have a lot of other 3D printed airplanes and a couple other builds on there that you guys want to check out. Uh, we're going to throw this thing on the scale. So to get the CG set for this plane, uh, I had to put a 200 gram battery in the in the nose of it to get the CG right. So that brought my ready to fly weight right to about 800 grams, which is about 60 grams overweight. Uh, and most of that's because of the battery. Uh, I do have two of the pieces of fuselage were a little bit overweight. Click the link up in the corner for the full maiden flight video. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks you guys for watching.